The opening song today is a music video with the words. My child arrived just the other day He came to the world in the usual way But there were planes to catch and bills to pay He learned to walk while I was away And he was talking for I knew it And as he grew he'd say I'm gonna be like you Dad, you know I'm gonna be like you And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon Little boy blue and the man on the moon When you're coming home, Dad, I don't know when But we'll get together then You know we'll have a good time then My son I'm gonna be like him, yeah, you know I'm gonna be like him. And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon, the little boy blue and the man on the moon. When you're coming home, Dad, I don't know when, but we'll get together then. You know we'll have a good time then. The other day, so much like a man I just had to say, son, I'm proud of you. Can you sit for a while? He shook his head and he said with a smile, what I'd really like, Dad, is to borrow the car keys. See you later, can I have them, please? And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon, little boy blue and the man on the moon. When you're coming home, son, I don't know. Since retired, my son's moved away I called him up just the other day I said I'd like to see you if you don't mind He said I'd love to, Dad, if I can find the time You see, my new job's a hassle and the kids are the flu But it's your sure nice talking to you, Dad It's been your sure nice talking to you And as I hung up the phone, it occurred to me He'd grown up just like me My boy was just like me And the cats in the pail and the silver spoon The little boy blue and the man on the boat When you're coming home, son, I don't know when But we'll get together then And we're gonna have a good time there Because many of us have been maybe on both sides of that equation, haven't we? <laughs> you know? But this, this passage gets at something. This, this song really gets at something, you know? This child arrives. Uh, I just had a grandniece born this week, by the way. Uh, Lance and Liz, who were here, I mean, perhaps in this service, uh, it's their fourth child born this week. It's maybe sort of appropriate for this as well. That child is born with so much promise and everything, but the dad is so busy, he's got planes to catch. He's making, I've got to provide for this child, right? Got to provide for this child. And, uh, but, you know, they learn to walk while he's away. They learn to talk while he's away. And, and yet, as this child comes to consciousness, they want, and he wants to be like his dad. And uh, when are you going to come home? He says, I don't know when, but we'll get together when I do. 
And boy, we're going to have a great time when I get home. Then, of course, the kid has his 10th birthday, and the son, the, the dad, oh, he gave him a baseball. Oh, wow, this is great. Can you teach me to throw? Uh, no, I'm, I'm too busy. I can't really do that. Uh, and the son, of course, is only 10, and all right. And, uh, but he still says, I'm going to be like him. I'm going to be like him. And the dad says, well, we'll, we'll do it another time. But we'll, we'll do it. We'll have a great time, but it's going to be sometime in the future. But then when a kid goes off to college, the tables are turned, aren't they? She was on the other foot. He comes home and he says, my gosh, you've really grown up. I'd love to sit and talk with you, find out what's been going on, how, what you're thinking. He says, uh, I don't really have time. Just give me the car keys. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm going to go see my friends. And... Uh, he says, well, well, we'll get together. We'll get together later. And then at the end of the song, he's retired. The son's moved away. Calls him on the phone. The son hardly has time to even talk to him on the phone. Doesn't, want to, doesn't have time for him. The dad to come and visit. You know, he, he, he can hardly on the phone. Uh, it's great talking to you, Dad. And rushes off. And the father laments, yeah, he grew up to be just like me. This song, uh, while I was working on the scripture this week, I feel the Lord just sort of hit me with this song because it expresses a deep truth about relationships that our past scripture today deals with. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. We need to meet God's availability with our availability. We need to meet God's availability with our availability and our responsiveness. I think we understand that, don't we? In our own relationships, how important it is to be available to the other person and responsive. Uh, I don't do that very well for a lot of people. Sometimes I, uh, Diana, standing right in front of Diana, and she's telling me something, and I'm not really there. <laughs> that ever happened to any of you? Not really there, and it just goes right by me, and then finally, somehow, she gets my attention or something, and I, I'm available for a moment, and I have to ask her to repeat what she just said to my face. I don't say that uh, that's not a, a good thing. That's not a good thing. But it expresses the truth in the song and the truth in the scripture passage. When God's available, we need to be available. And we need to respond to God in our availability. Now, throughout the song, one is available, seeking connection with the other. But the lack of responsiveness of the other affects the outcome, the short-term and the long-term outcome, doesn't it? God is always a present. There's no question about that. There's, you can go to hell and God's not gonna, you're not going to be a far from God. God's available to us. God is present with us. But... It, uh, our availability is, is a bit different, is it? There are times in our lives where we felt God closely, right? We felt God preaching. We felt God reaching out to us. It might have been in a religious context. It might have been in a totally different non-church religious context. But we felt something. We've heard something through somebody else or something in the core of our soul. However that happens, it can happen all kinds of ways. But God is available to us and makes his presence known to us. And then there are times when we just feel totally cut off from God. We're, we're cold to God. We ignore God. Uh, we feel sort of cut off. And we feel like God is a million miles away. But God's not a million miles away. We're a million miles away, right? Seek the Lord while he may be found. You see, the danger 
isn't that God may leave and not be there. The danger is that we will cut ourselves off and don't even want to seek the Lord or call upon him. If we don't match our responsiveness to God's availability, we can do some harm to ourselves so that we are not able to access God's presence. You know how I mean, your, your skin rubs something and you create a callus over time, you rub, 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 and then the sensitivity of that skin uh, is less because you build a callus, and then you can rub and hardly even feel it, right? Well, this, our relationship with God and with other people can happen that way. If, if someone's approaching and you're touching it, and wow, at first it's sensitive, wow. But if you rub and ignore in time, you build up a callus, you're not even aware <laughs> that the rubbing is happening. That's what can happen inside of us if we ignore God's overtures and the signs of God in our life. Over time, we can, so to speak, build a wall and brick by brick wall ourselves in and wall ourselves off from God. God's on the other side of the wall, but we've built that wall from our lack of availability and responsiveness over time to the point that even if God spoke, we don't know if it would penetrate the wall. And if we want, we get in need and we want something, there's a wall there and I don't know how to get through. That's the danger. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. That's speaking to our responsiveness and our availability to those times when God does come close to us and speak to us, and nudges us. We can harden our hearts to the point that God can't get through. That's the danger. It's not, we're not worried about God going away. The danger is the, the damage we can do to ourselves from our lack of availability and responsiveness. Years ago, a missionary friend of ours came home from the hairdresser, and she told uh, Lois Miller, and uh, she told a story that at the hairdresser, there was this woman, one of the customers, crying inconsolably. Finally, she calmed down enough to tell her story. Well, she and her husband had married and they'd had one child, a son, and she had poured her whole life into this boy. She had basically forgot about her husband almost, and she had focused on this boy, her son. That was the joy and pride of her life. He grew up and eventually got a job and moved far away. And he was not living at home anymore. And the reason she was crying so inconsolably, in part, of course, was obviously missing her son and the, and the trauma of that separation. But what she was saying to the other customers was, I'm trapped at home with a man I don't even know. Trapped at home with a man I don't even know. Why? Because over the years, her availability to him, her responsiveness to him, and the other direction, all of their availability and responsiveness was on the son. There was none for the spouse. And they built a wall between them. But they happen to be enclosed in the same room, and they don't even know one another. That illustrates the danger <laughs> of not seeking the Lord while he may be found, or calling upon him while he is near. Now that I have you all in the doldrums, <laughs> you're about to reach for the tissue, let's, let's look at this in a different way. Let's take this song and look at it using x-rays. You know how an x-ray is? You take that and you hold up the film, and you see an x-ray. You see through things in a different way. Let's take the positive side of that. Let's play the what if game. What if? What if the father hadn't been too busy? What would the relationship be like? What kind of experiences would they share together? How would the boy turn out? How would that boy feel about himself? What's the likelihood of the way that boy would be with his own children someday? <laughs> What if? 
What can happen if we meet God's availability with our availability in our responsiveness? What can happen if we meet God's availability with our availability in our responsiveness? Well, it opens the door to limitless possibilities. Literally limitless possibilities. If that boy had, if that father had been there to share that boy's life, just think of the enjoyment they could have had together, the fun they could have together, just the quiet times of being together and just having fun or watching TV together. Think of the satisfaction. Think of the sense of fulfillment in each of them as people. Think of the soul bond that would be there and deeply treasured by both of them. Think of how this child would grow up to be there for his own children. Wasn't that beautiful? Isn't that a beautiful picture? But that's not an unrealistic, idealistic picture. It's a picture of one who's available and responsive in the relationship. And that applies to us and God. You know, the passage we read today, you say, what does this have to do with Isaiah 55? Isaiah, near the end of Isaiah, they're anticipating their release from the exile in Babylon and returning to Israel and rebuilding their country and having a deep spiritual renewal as the people of God. They're getting renewed in their vocation as God's people. And this passage is anticipating that. And it says that anticipating the great celebratory banquet, just imagine, have all these years in exile and get to come back as a people and the party you're going to have. It says, oops, I just hit this thing. And it, or excuse me. It says, ho, oh, everyone who thirst, come to the waters. You that have no money, come, buy, and eat. This is anticipating this great banquet of celebration that they're going to have together of this relationship as God saves them from exile. And then right after he's been talking about the celebratory banquet, that's when he says, seek the Lord. We want to have this banquet, but to do that, you've got to seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near and set your feet right, set your relationship right with the living God. And then after our passage, he says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. God is saying, what I have planned and in store for you is going to blow your mind. It's way beyond what you can even imagine. The Apostle Paul captured it beautifully in 1 Corinthians 2.9. He says, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of Mind, the human mind even conceived of is what God has prepared for those who love him. That's the same kind of thing he's getting at here about God's thoughts not being our thoughts and higher than our thoughts. On the other side of our availability and responsiveness, God has great things available and present for us. <coughs> One of my memory verses that means a lot to me and more and more as I go it's Psalm chapter 16, verse 11, which I memorized in the New Revised Standard Version. And it says, You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And in your right hand, pleasures forevermore. I love this because you show me the path of life. Life, full, meaningful life, is lived in proper relationship with God. Apart from that, life is substandard. At the, most, at, the very, at the best. But you show me. What is the path to this full substance of life in relation? It says, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. This doesn't mean your presence when you're at church. This means God's presence in your life moment by moment through every single day, through the ups and the downs and the difficulties and the failures and all of it, God's presence with us. There is a joy of the relationship of living with this God when we're available, when we're responsive to the God who is there for us. You show me the path of life. In your presence is full near to joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. This, we don't often associate God with pleasure, but pleasures at the deepest level of enjoyment from living life in tune, in harmony with God. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's in here. We meet God's availability with our availability. 
and our responsiveness. During Lent, we are reminded of God's availability and of God's outreach to us. God takes the initiative. He's not just sitting there and we have to find God. God comes to us. And God's love never gives up on us. God is near and can be found. But let's remember this song and beware of the dangers of brushing God aside, of ignoring God's gestures towards us, of ignoring that little nudge and that voice, that sense of God in our lives, or of relegating God to just a small corner of our lives. Instead, let us decide to be open and available to God moment by moment of every day. That's what God wants to do. God wants to play ball. God wants to sit down and chat. God wants to come over and visit. God wants to spend time with us so that we can be like him. We follow Jesus so that we can be like him. I'm going to be like you, Lord. You know I'm going to be like you. Let's pray. <clears throat> oh God, thank you so much for your word today to remind us of your availability and of your responsiveness and that you reach out to us and you take the initiative and you, you don't give up on us. But also, God, thank you through your scripture and through this song to remind us of the incredible importance of our being available to you, of our being responsive to you. Because on the other side of that availability and responsiveness is genuine, full, joyful, pleasurable, deeply meaningful life. Not just for us, but for others through us. Oh Lord, make us to be more like you. In Jesus' name.